The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets barely in the red, pairing some of the gains we had in the pre market yesterday. And we're right at yesterday's session lows. We're negative by seven points right now, trading at 55.37. Those lows yesterday, about 55.30 in the SPs, you make that low at about 4.45 a.m. this morning. We were just down at that level at about 8.20 a.m. Uh, we'll see where the day goes, and it's going to be an interesting one triple witching yeah triple witching we got weekly monthly and quarterly options all expiring today june 21st okay you pull up the calendar it's the third friday of the month that means that monthly options are expiring it's the sixth month of the year that means quarterly options are expiring and it's friday so we got weekly options expiring they got daily options now as well but we got them all man that's going to be the headline <clears throat> how about you know what why not let's pull up the headline 5.5 trillion how about that number man you almost can't fathom the type of money that is dealt with in terms of the derivative market these days 5.5 trillion triple witching to test the market calm and the real kicker here is okay my dad was talking about it in his program last night is how about 11 to 1 where is it there it is this time around the expiring value tied to calls is some 11 times greater than the notional value of puts you think everybody's long this market at highs Whoo, yeah uh last quarter that ratio was close to five to one Okay, the widening gap signals growing demand for upside exposure alongside shriveling desire for puts. No one wants puts. Everybody wants calls. The market's at all-time highs. NVIDIA through the roof. AI putting a fire underneath this market. Um, it might also prime highly traded benchmarks and stocks from minor dips lower on Friday and into early next week. That's one analyst. Uh, Brent Kochuba. Spot Gamma's founder. Nonetheless, back to the markets. It's going to be an interesting Friday, folks. We got markets negative by five, and boy, this market's been on quite a tear. You back it up on a daily. You talk about an acceleration, man. I've been talking about it, right? You just look at the lows that we were at in last November, and you're up, what, 25% from that low? From 41.22 up to 55.39 right now in the S&Ps. This morning, though, we're negative by about five ticks. You look at the NASDAQ 100. Back to a 15-minute chart. We'll put it on five minutes. We pair some of the gains that we had early yesterday. And again, just like the S&Ps, chopping around near yesterday's lows, right near the 20,000 mark. We're trading at 20,019. The Dow right now, just under 40,000, 39,555. And no Russell, the only index currently in the green, at two, uh, two points in the positive, 2,041. I think this article mentioned we also got Russell rebalancing. Is that right? I think it is. We'll pull it up at the break, but I think we got a Russell rebalancing. Is that right? I think it is. All right, we'll check it out. Pretty sure that's the deal coming around on the weekend as well. Bitcoin this morning, down about $1,400, $63,700. Crude continuing to climb. You're seeing it at the gas pumps. Uh, we got a treat. We usually talk to our man Teddy Kegstats, Ted, Teddy Kegstat on Wednesday. Market was closed for Juneteenth this Wednesday, so we got him on Friday as we close out the week. Interesting day as we got crude on quite a little uptrend, man, from June 4th. We're up almost $10. That's almost a 15% acceleration in the price of crude just in the last, what, 17 days or so? As we're hitting 81.56, you're seeing it at the gas pump. It's happening. I think I saw gas at 309 somewhere a week or two ago. Right now, I just saw it at like 335, just that quick. Not surprising when you got crude hitting 81.56. We're finally catching a little bit of a bid in that crude market. Now, speaking of other commodities, how about gold, man? It would make sense. Gold, with quite the acceleration, began at about 9 a.m. yesterday during my program by 10 o'clock. You were pushing at lofty levels, and we're right near the highs right now. Gold up another $7 on the session. But, boy, I mean, you just back it up to where we were pre-market 
or even we'll call it Wednesday night, right? Wednesday, you're trading at 2340. We're up 35 bucks from where we were then. You take a look at the daily on gold. I mean, we've had some pullbacks on this equity, okay? The most substantial on June 7th, where you traded down over $100 on one day. But all we've been doing is chopping around between a range of 2300 and 2400 I bring that to notes and bonds, okay? Because what do we have? We have continued higher price and lower yield. Today, you got the tenure up another four ticks. We did pull back yesterday. We get it all back. We just hit 110.25. And you're talking about a yield right now of 4.23. 4.23%. That's a pretty low yield on a 10-year basis when you think about the growth going on in this economy. Right? Not a lot of cost of capital when you think about the, the type of growth that we're experiencing right now in these market prices. So we have lower yield with a 10-year at 4.23. We have a dollar index still gaining, which is remarkable, at 105.77. Okay? We had some central bank action yesterday with the Bank of England, with the Bank of Switzerland over there. But look at how well gold is done with where the dollar is. You ever get a weakening dollar index? I'm not calling for a weakening dollar, okay? But risk reward wise, we're at some lofty levels, man. Okay, the only area above this chart in the dollar is that huge acceleration in late 2022 when we hit 115. I don't think that's coming back, okay? If you remember where the Euro US dollar, and this is a nice little teaser to our conversation with Teddy Kegstex, I can't wait to get his opinion in terms of what's happening with the dollar, what's happening with yields, all right? That correlated to a euro US dollar of 95, 95, right? I don't think that's coming back. Anything could happen. But then you look at things on a longer term basis. You look at where we are on the euro US dollar. Very few times on this chart have we got below this level, okay? And they've really correlated to some dire economic situations. The 2000 dot com bubble, okay? We back it up to the dollar index. And look where we are, man. We're at 106. Look at this chart in the dollar index in terms of where we've been over a longer period of time. The only time on this chart that we've been higher is the 2000 dot com bubble and that acceleration in August of 2022. And remember, that was at a time when the U.S. raised rates and everybody else was late to the party and we were the only game in town for yield. That's not the case anymore. OK, we're going to begin cutting. We may maintain a higher interest rate than some of Europe. Okay, they're dealing with some woes, man. We got an economy. No matter what you hear in the media, man, our economy is on fire. Okay, politics getting in the way of everything. The U.S. economy is on fire. Yes, we have some recency problems with inflation. Okay, the consumers are dealing with inflation numbers that are up 30 or 40 percent over a three or four year basis. That's going to take a couple years to get out of the mentality that the prices are high. But our economy is on fire, period, end of story. That's going to allow us to keep rates a little bit higher potentially than Europe. That's going to potentially put a little bit of a bid in the dollar index. But on a longer term basis, boy, we're at some pretty lofty levels, man. You want to see some weakness. You want to see some weakness? Where's, where's our dollar yen as we wrap up this first segment? There is some weakness, man. How about the dollar yen? 159 on the dot. Yeah, I was, as I was pulling it up, I was like, we're going to be at 159. We're going to be at 159. I wonder if we're going to be there when I pull it up for the show. 159 on the dot in that dollar yen, man. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some of those equities. Triple witching Friday, $5.5 trillion. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets basically flat. S&Ps right now negative by two. NASDAQ 100 positive by single digits. Dow and Russell positive by single digits. And how about that trade from NVIDIA yesterday? You're talking about a $10 pullback from 140 to 130. You jump over to NVIDIA, 3.148. This company lost $300 billion dollars in market cap yesterday almost just remarkable pullback the volatility going on nvidia was the most expensive company in the world out there so 3.147 is where you sit right now you jump over to apple apple currently sitting at a market cap of 3.24 so they're now above them and microsoft you jump over to microsoft shares market cap you're sitting at 3.318 so microsoft reclaims the top spot apple in the number two position and then nvidia at 3.15 the reason why I bring up NVIDIA, man, if you check out the volume as well, all right, this is a daily. I've been talking about this A to B, C to D. It completed at 125. All right, 125 on this chart is about the high that you got to, yeah, right there on June 6th, okay? You got to that high at 125.59. You were within 10 pennies of the completion. Now, what's interesting here is June 6th, you had volume on that pullback of 664 million. Okay, the last time it had a real jump on volume was when you accelerated following their earnings on May 23rd, 835 million. You had quite a pullback on that red bar on June 6th of 664 million on that day. And then look at the volume as you trickled higher. Okay, that day closed out at 121 on the dot. You made it up another $19, almost 20, to 140.76. Okay, that's another 16% this equity climbed from the close of June 6th, and you did it on nothing. Look at the volume, right? So that was a big day at $664 million. Even the day prior to earnings, you did $528 million. A couple days prior, you did four hundred, and you did 438 and then look at the days, okay? The next day was 412, 
300 million, 222, 299, 260, 309, 288, 294, and then kaboom, 517 to the downside. Very little volume to drive this equity above that high, above the extension of that A to B, C to D. Now, NVIDIA is going nowhere, okay? This equity is not going to drop out of the water and disappear. But you are at lofty levels. They could see quite a pullback. Maybe you just pull back to 100, okay? And yeah, that seems like a lot. But is that really a lot? If you pull back to 100, folks, for context, that would give you a double bagger this year. That's how lofty this acceleration has been, man. Um, so be careful on NVIDIA. That is quite a pullback you're dealing with of $10, and you're down another $3.50 to kick off today. And that's on nothing. You're down to 127.35, and that's as equities have held up relatively well. You know, you take a look at Amazon. You're going to be positive today, quite a positive day yesterday. Maybe you have a little bit of rotation, right? Maybe people are a little overweighted on NVIDIA as they're coming into you know, you got to be a little overweight, man, when you have NVIDIA shares almost tripling in value just this year alone, and we're not even halfway through the year. You go from 47 to 140. It's almost tripled in value this year, and we're not even through June, okay? So it wouldn't be surprising if you had a little bit of diversification rotation going on. Amazon share is going to be up another buck 80. Maybe that's what's happening, right? Google shares going to be up positive today by about 30 pennies. You jump over to Microsoft shares. They're positive by about 40 pennies as well. We check out Apple shares right now. They're positive by two bucks as well. Now, Apple had quite a little pullback as well. Uh, that resurgence on their AI progress and the fact that you might get a super cycle in terms of people upgrading their phones, you're going to have to have a 15 Pro Max to be able to use all those AI features because you're going to have to have the capabilities within your phone to be able to handle the accelerators necessary to handle some of those AI features locally within your phone, a 15 Pro Max or the 16 coming this fall. I've been talking about it. I got a 12 Pro Max. I'm pretty close to the cycle where I was planning anyway, so I've held out to a good point probably. I'll probably get a 16. That'll be about four years I've gone in between. But yeah, um, it seems like that's going to be the first real, think about it, when's the last time? And I'm digressing, jumping to Apple, but it really is. It's it's a real acceleration. Surprise, more people didn't pick it up the moment they said, hey, you got to have a 15 Pro Max or a 16 to use all the features we're talking about. There isn't a time I can remember when Apple had a real feature added that gave you an impetus to upgrade, right? Besides what? An upgraded camera, an upgraded accelerator. It's always been faster phones. It's always been better cameras maybe better battery life, but that's not noticeable. There are actually going to be features that you cannot use with a 15. Imagine that. If you just bought a 15 and you didn't buy the 15 Pro Max, you're not going to be able to use all the features that are coming at you right now. That is a remarkable acceleration that may take place when you think about the need to accelerate and buy a new iPhone. And, of course, what are you going to get? Well, if you just bought a 15, you might be able to get some type of kickback right you turn in your phone you get a little bit of that money back but i don't know the resale value on a 15 may plummet if people don't want it because um yeah yeah we'll see what happens nonetheless uh watch out for nvidia man so that is quite a pullback we're off three dollars and fifty cents again today you're off thirteen dollars from where we were yesterday uh and we just lost three hundred billion dollars in market cap remarkable acceleration and yeah, we're still at $3.15 trillion to put things in context, man. All right, what else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of cars. How about CarMax? CarMax out with their numbers today. A little bit of volatility. There it is. So CarMax, let's pull up their headlines right now. 33% drop in first quarter profit is the headline there. They report net income of $152 million. That's down from $228 million a year earlier. Analysts were looking for $0.94 cents a share. They make 97 though, so it's a beat. They knew they were going to suffer in terms of what they made a year ago. For the reported quarter, revenue, $7.11 billion, just short of what they were looking at. Used vehicle revenue falling 5.4%. Vehicle affordability challenges continue to impact our first quarter. Yeah, vehicle affordability challenges. I remember talking to Jacob about this, man. It is remarkable. Some of the price tags on vehicles out there where $100,000 somehow is, is the top end on – you're not talking about, you know – 
Austin Martins. You're not talking about uh, Mbox anymore. You're talking about Tahoes. You're talking about Jeep Grand Cherokees, etc. Pretty remarkable. Uh, ongoing headwinds due to widespread inflationary pressures, higher interest rates, and tighten lending standards is what they're dealing with here. They've employed a host of cost cuts, including slashing marketing and capital expenditures over the past few years to help fend off a hit to margins. And nonetheless, they survived their earnings. They're up a couple bucks coming into those numbers. We take a look at the daily. Well off the $88 they had their last earnings at. Right, you came into those earnings, you plummeted. We're sitting at seventy-one thirty-six, and you're going to open at about seventy-three dollars for CarMax. And the other story out there, how about this one? Car dealer chaos arises from cyber attack on the one point two trillion dollar market. So CDK warns its systems are likely going to be down for several more days. If you're thinking about buying a car right now, wait a few days, folks, unless you want to go in there and deal with handwritten paper contracts. Pretty remarkable. We'll talk about that when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit of a pullback into the opening bell. You got S&Ps down by 14 points right now. This is a five-minute chart. At 920, we're up at 5542. We're trading at 5529 right now. All the markets in the red. NASDAQ 100, we're down about 43. We check in on what was the biggest equity in the world. NVIDIA down by 3.4%. Just like that, we just got a 125 handle. 
in the pre-market. You had a 141 handle in the pre-market just 24 hours ago. And remember, folks, NVIDIA, what do they got now? How many shares? 25 billion shares for simple math. 25 billion shares. And you're talking about a $15 move from yesterday to today to 24 hours. Remarkable, man. Uh, all the markets in the red, a little bit of a pullback. We check in on some of those equities. Amazon. Up almost 1% right now. Maybe you are getting a little bit of a rotation, man, for diversification. Google, up by 6 tenths percent. They get a bid as well. Microsoft shares in the positive. And Apple in the positive as well, even though they do get a little bit of a pullback on the opening bell, still positive by about 2 tenths. So think about that, right? Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, all positive right now. And you got markets right across the board. But NVIDIA, down by 2.7 percent pretty remarkable we check in on tesla shares tesla positive by six tenths percent so far this morning we got jump back to the car story auto nation there's auto nation for you they took it on the chin yesterday as it is pretty remarkable when you think about and this is where you know you're relying on one piece of software and the whole industry is okay this is cdk and what's happened is they talk about here that this is basically a back-end software for dealer management, okay? Its core product, a suite of software tools referred to as dealer management systems, DMS, underpins virtually every element of the auto retailer's day-to-day -day business. There's only a handful of them because of consolidation over the past decades. That's left thousands of retailers highly reliant on each of the select few software companies that enable them to line up financing and insurance, manage vehicles, and parts. So if you're thinking about doing anything with your car, okay, even talking about service, anything, stay away from dealerships until this is fixed, man. CDK's parent, Brookfield Business Partners, LP, worst trading day since October. They were down almost 6%. There was AutoNation down another 36 the biggest drop in two months. Um, everybody, yeah, and when this happened, this happened, too, on a federal holiday. Think about that. It happened on June 19th. When everybody was off work, think about the business that may have been lost, man. 15,000 dealers is who is at play here. Pretty remarkable when you put it in that context. 15,000 dealers. It hits during a national federal holiday, and it's still persisting days later from a cyber attack. Just that simple, man. And you got huge swaths of the industry impacted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about even something as simple as reinstalling the car seats for their children. They hadn't heard from heard more from the dealer as of Thursday afternoon. Yeah, nonetheless, everything on pause, man, when you're talking about the back end. And you see how technology can just impact everything in a heartbeat. Auto Nation basically flat today after trading down from 168 to 161 yesterday. We checked back in on CarMax on their numbers. You give it up a bit on the open to 72.28 right now. All right, see what else we have going on in this market. Yeah, NVIDIA, right? And this is what you're talking about. This is what you're seeing play out today, folks. The market is overly reliant on the chip company which on its own accounted for a third of this month's gain in the S&P 500. Well, that was written last night. And it's not surprising it was written when you think about the $10 pullback yesterday. I mean, look at these gains. Look at this. The S&P 500, folks, okay, is up 15% this year. NVIDIA is up 175%. You better believe that it's got a huge impact, man. The Russell 2000, down 17% from its number, November 2021 peak. A few of these companies, man, they're doing everything. And just be aware of it. There's nothing wrong with it, but just be aware of it. We jump over to Starbucks. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, right, with McDonald's with their $5 value meal. Starbucks is pumping out more deals to woo price-sensitive customers. I wonder how long they're going to last, and I wonder where the hit is going to be to margins. For a grande-sized brew coffee... An average list of price of 365 rings up more like 183 with a buy one get one free offer. You got caramel frappuccino, usually 565. These customers might be paying half prices. They're going for bogos, man. I love my my Publix bogos, and is Starbucks going to start kicking those out as well? If you use the Starbucks app, folks, they do have 
a number of deals occasionally. This month, for the first time in more than a decade, Starbucks began offering bundles of coffee and breakfast food starting at $5, kind of an extension of what we talked about yesterday. The only thing I'll say is be aware of the potential hit to margins if you think this is going to drive business, man, because there's a reason why these companies have been making so much money, and it's because of the margins that they get. You take a look at Starbucks, right? Quite the chart, man. You go from 120 at the beginning of 2022 down to 70 that same year. We almost make it back. We make it to 115 in 2023, and you just basically tested the lows of almost 70 bucks. You made it to a low of 71.80 on Starbucks. Yeah, and on a monthly basis, still on quite a tear. But you see, maybe that's the area of, of resistance. You got back down to the lows of 2022. You got back down to those lows this year. You accelerated below those lows. I don't know. Maybe it's got to test the $68 area, which is an area of resistance you had on the highs of 2015. You make it to 126. But boy, they got some issues, man. Everybody's dealing with it. Everything seems expensive. And they're all fighting for affordability at a time when consumers are aware of everything going on. This one's interesting as well. Amazon. So Amazon up today. And you look at the impact that they can have on the environment. Companies of this size. How about Amazon? 15 billion fewer plastic pillows annually. 15 billion. So they're going to ditch the plastic air pillows that we're all so familiar with and popping occasionally. And they're going to fill them with recycled materials, recycled paper. Yeah, that began in October 2023. The paper fillers are going to be made with 100% recycled material and are curbside recyclable. You know, Amazon catches a lot of grief for all the boxes they have, right? They don't reuse anything. That's part of their quality, though. I tell you, I've gotten some deliveries. I talked about it during COVID. I would get some deliveries from Walmart and Sam's. Felt like they were packaged in a third world country from used up boxes and everything was just broken inside. And Amazon would never let that happen. So I'm sure they made sure they could deliver the quality for paper fillers as opposed to the reliability that probably those plastic air pillows allow. But as of Thursday, it's removed 95% of the plastic air pillows from its packaging in North America. No easy feat. I mean, they are quite a business when it comes to process. And they're going to fill them with 100% re recycled content. And yeah, they're going to get that done. It's going to be completed and they're on their way. Pretty remarkable, man. All right. All right. We're coming into the break. Let's check in on the dollar index. As we come back with our man, Teddy Kegstad, we'll talk a little bit of currencies. You get the dollar right now. Trading at 105.74. We'll talk a little bit of dollar. We'll talk a little bit of crude. As crude right now, 81.41. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps down about 14 points right now. We got a treat. We usually talk to our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays at 40 past. We have the markets closed, so he's jumped on the line with us on Friday. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, folks, Teddy puts out an outstanding report every Monday. Updates throughout the week when warranted. You can subscribe to it for $97 right under the newsletter tab. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Great information in there no matter what, even if you just keep it for 30 days. I encourage you to try it out. And then don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars in there. Capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads in there with Teddy and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Both of those, $97. Uh, you gain access to the archive. You get it for forever. You can watch it as many times as you need. We're coming up on the weekend. If you got some time to check it out, I encourage you to check out both those webinars. Uh, Teddy, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Got some interesting stuff to end the week with, huh? I, I you know, it seems like, Teddy, I, I guess every day is pretty interesting in this market right now. But it seems like when we talk to you, we do always have some pretty interesting action going on. Uh, we got some action in crude above $81. Boy, that yen, I talked about it hitting 159 earlier in the session. And uh, we had a little bit of central bank action this week. Bank of England, uh, Switzerland out there. And then, of course, you have the conversation about our rates with some potentially weakening numbers but as we know we're still sitting about five and a quarter five point five percent um what's what's on the top of the agenda this morning man where do you want to kick things off uh well i think we could start with crude you know um and that also will tie into as far as any type of rate uh cuts also i mean nice. you have to look at the acceleration in crude just over the past month i mean yeah. the, the gas prices never came down even though oil dropped as low as it did um here's some interesting numbers for you uh crude oil just in the past what is it in the past week is up uh, over four percent over the past month it's up just under four percent okay uh over the past three months it's up just about 0.4%, but this is where it gets crazy. In the past six months, oil is up almost 10%. Year to date, it's up over 13%. And in over the past year, uh, or, uh, in the past year, it's up over 12%. So anyway, you're looking at it, 2% inflation, get out of here. You know, I mean, that target is not even going to remotely get even close unless those numbers really, really drop significantly. You know, I mean, we're here at, in the towards the end of the second quarter, the end of June, and with oil prices where they're at right now, I mean, get out of town. If you think you're going to see a rate cut this year, it's only because the Fed really wants to juice the market or something because there is no way that their numbers are going to be reflecting that they should do that. You know, this the crude oil where it's at right now okay is and especially because of the fact that yields haven't come back you know that where the market is 
is commanding them to be, you know, that's going to keep things at relatively high pricing. You know, I mean, there's no way that you're going to see. I mean, where the only way you're going to see things come down is you have to have oversupply of everything. You know, where's production going to ramp up like that? You know, production isn't going up, it's going down. You know, I mean, if you look at the S&P 500, you talk about NVIDIA and Google and Apple, that's great. But 56% of the stocks in the S&P 500 are below the 50-day moving average. How bullish can that be? You know, yeah. so and I, and I think you're going to see that with the dollar and with interest rates. You know, we're, we're in a sideways trade. You can tell the, how reflectionary it is right now. You know, I mean, yeah, you do have the yen breaking out to the upside again. You know, that's a whole different dynamic. But as, as a whole, you know, you don't have very much action. You know, everything's very sideways, you know, and I think that you have to look at the, you know, the charts are so consolidated now. I and mean, if you look at the euro U.S. dollar on a daily trade, you know, if, if you look, break it down into like five five minute and 10 minute charts and 30 minute charts, it starts to look like there's a little bit of volatility. You put it up on a daily and if you look at the average true range of the, of the of what market action we've had over the past couple of months, there's not a lot of stuff on the table there. You know, I mean, people who read the Tiger Forex report, it's really hard coming out with a, you know, week in and week out saying, hey, sorry, we were in a sideways environment. Be careful. This is all you got to work with this week. That's all that there is on the table. When you look in retrospect, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back for being right for calling a sideways market. But guess what? That's what you got to pay attention to. That is where we are in right now, you know, and until yeah. we have anything to really sign signal that we're coming out of that, that's the environment we're in. You got to be very cautious on that. You know, you have to be rational in your expectations. You know, I mean, is crude going to fly up to $100 a barrel? You know, there was a time when I was giving you numbers like that. I think we're going to press resistance. I don't think we're going up to, to $100 a barrel anytime soon, you know, but I think like we've been talking about before with crude, that 70 area, 75 area is pretty much the low bottom of support there. And this yeah. 80 to 90, 95 area is your range trade. You know, are we going to get to 100, 110? Could we have a spike? Absolutely. You know, but I don't see that really happening either right now. You know, but like I said, when I started off with this conversation about if you look at the percentages of what oil is up on the year, you know, where where are the rate cuts coming from? Where is this environment of inflation at least halting, you know, not pulling back? I mean, we need deflation this is what we need, you know, and I don't see that on the table at all. Do you? No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and it is. I was jumping through those charts, man. Pretty interesting. I mean, crude. And I was even going back like a year and a half ago to, to the beginning of 2023. And of course, like you mentioned, you know, we have a few spikes out of the range. But boy, between 70 and $80 for crude, um, a lot of action in between just that $10 range. And then mm -hmm. the euro US dollar as well, man. Um, you know, you got a couple of spikes, but 105 to 110 for a year and a half, maybe the middle of last year, we made it up to 112. The beginning of this year, right. we were just above 110. But you're talking about a year and a half between 105 and 110 for the euro US dollar. Um, right. Yeah, that, that is over that period of time. And I think especially following the moves we had coming into that area, right? I mean, Correct. just mammoth Correct. moves coming into that. And then we have sure. an area of five pennies for 18 months going on and the euro US dollar. Um, yeah, that is quite right. a range trade for sure. And remember, yeah. we're coming off of, you know, first there was the COVID scandemic. Then we had the election. Now we have now we have another election coming on with the Fed in basically on pause. So we went from having these trending markets and wild volatile markets, and now they're consolidating. So they're winding the coil. Which way are they going to explode, up or down? Well, we'll see how things go. But that's the yeah. period that we're in right now. You know, it, it was, it, remember a couple of years ago, it was easy to make a lot of like long term trend calls because of the yeah. fundamentals in the market. Okay. Well, the fundamentals in the market right now are so mixed and choppy. That's why we have what's going on. And this is what I would hope the newer traders, because um, everyone wants to try and make money. And I, I appreciate a good work ethic that anyone sits down and wants to try and make money every day. But a good trader knows that you don't force a trade. If you do, you're over trading, you're going to lose money. That's good. It's counter. It's counterproductive, you know. So and this is the kind of environment like, you know, 
I, you've heard me say many a times, why, you know, when I ask the question, why do I trade currencies so much? Well, currencies tend to trend 70% of the time. All other markets trend only 30% of the time at best. So you're in a sideways market in almost every single other market environment all of the time. You know, now you have yeah. the currencies in a sideways market and they're typically trends, trending markets. So you just got to deal point, with it. Man. You've had some great calls over those last couple of years. Can you hang with us for the final few minutes? Sure, why not? Perfect. I want to ask you about the, the Swiss over there um, and maybe some other quick ones. We'll be right back with Teddy, folks. Stay tuned. We'll finish up the conversation. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets pulling back a bit with the S&Ps now off about 20 points, trading at 55.24. We were, lower, were as low as 55.20. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. And, Teddy, I wanted to take, get your take on the Swiss National Bank. So I remember when, you know, years, years back, man, we talked about parity and not so much the case anymore. You got the dollar, Swiss franc at about 89 pennies, it looks like. But they come out with their second cut and... You know, what do you think about the general conversation there where, you know, their numbers, I think I saw something like GDP growth somewhere near 1%, inflation somewhere near 1%. So obviously a different environment. But for those that follow the Swiss franc, what do you think about the action over there as they're on their second cut already? Um, I, I actually don't really think very much of it. Uh, okay. I think that if, if, 
if, if we were on the bandwagon of really, I mean, like I said, do I think we should or shouldn't raise or cut rates? That's totally irrelevant. It's the plan of what they have in place and whether they stick to it or not. And I think that because of that, because now you're talking about dueling central banks, um, if if the Fed sticks to their guns on what the premise has been for the way they've been behaving, then I would say as long as our numbers are not reflective because they really aren't, there's we're not going to pop. We're not going to cut, you know. So are they being ahead of us? Are, is there going to be like a set? Are we going to have to play catch up? I, I don't think so, you know, because you got to remember, we were the aggressive ones that started all this, you know, and yes. I, I think that instead of. You know, people ha and the media ha they're have amnesia comes on before short term memory, you know, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, you know. So and I think that people are forgetting that. So the fact that they took action and even if they are going to take action again before us, they're behind us. So they're playing catch up to us. And the question is, nice. is did we maybe go too far to begin with, you know, or maybe we didn't okay. go far enough, you know. Nice. So I, I am with you on that one. That's at least that's my stance on when it comes to those things. I appreciate the take, man. And what are you thinking about gold? We got about 20 seconds. Gold at 23.50. Boy, we just pulled back like $30 since we were talking to you about that's get yesterday's game. What do you think about gold right now? I, I think it's set, getting ready to set up for a range trade for the next couple of months, to be quite honest with okay. you. Nice. So, yeah, it's been quite a yeah. run. That would make sense. Right. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always on a Friday, man. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Have a nice weekend, Tommy. Take care. You too. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned. Basil's up next.